How are you now? And how is she cutting? Welcome back to another episode, and I tell you, this one's gonna make you a very fast editor. It'll be sucking diesel, so you will. The Speedia. I'm Tom. Welcome to anyone new here. I wasn't supposed to make this video for another few weeks, but I've been blown away by the support, so thank you all so much for all the nice comments. I can't get over how supportive you've all been. So to anyone new here, uh, welcome. And to all my new subscribers, I hope this video will be as good as the last one. So I've been trying to think of something unique, a tip that'll stand out, and one that'll speed up your cuts, and I've got the very one. This is a simple one and applies to every editing software. It's actually one I've never seen many editing tutorials do. And all you need is this. Sure a mouse? Sure everyone uses that you'd say. But do they really use it? And I'm about to show you why. You see, on my mouse, and maybe your mouse, there's two buttons here on the side, usually used for going back and forwards on websites. But if you're not utilizing this for your editing, you're missing out big style. Now, if you don't have a mouse with two buttons on the side, I still recommend following along because the tips that I'm going to show you in this editing tutorial are still going to be very useful to you. So my editing shortcuts are primarily based off WASD. And if you're a PC gamer, this will be very familiar to you. So my main use shortcut keys are A for zoom out, S for zoom in, and D for delete. For fast forward, reverse and stop, normally referred to as the shuttle keys, usually JKL on every other software, I use Q, W, and E. And the reason that I do this is that my left hand can stay in the one area and I don't have to go looking across the keyboard for another shortcut. And then I also have Control, Alt, and Shift in the same area, so it just makes it that little bit easier. So this is where my speed hack comes in. So I have Start to Playhead remapped to two, and I have End to Playhead remapped to four. And this will either cut the top of the clip or else the end of the clip, depending on what I need. Now there's one very important final shortcut to this, and that is the center key between them, number three, which needs to be remapped to split clip. So here's what makes this fast. I use the side buttons on my mouse and I have them remapped to two and four. And then three is an easy reach from the shuttle keys. So then I can split the clip and I can cut either the top or the bottom of the clip, depending on what I need. I've got my keyboard shortcuts. So I'm not actually sure I use many of the default editing keys in the software. And do you know why? Because these were designed by a software specialist somewhere. And look, I'm sure some of them make great sense, but they can be remapped. So why not remap them in a way that suits you, the user of the software? We're all different in some many ways and maybe our processes of doing things are completely different and that's great and that's the way it should be. There's many ways to skin a cat as they say and I really recommend taking the time to select the shortcut keys that suit you. Don't let the software's default keybinds limit you and hold you back. Just because it's default doesn't mean it's the best way. Like every now and again I like remap something that I think would make absolutely perfect sense and then after using it for like a few minutes I'm like oh yeah this doesn't work that great and then I'll just change it to something else and then sometimes that works out. So just try things out. And this would be an ever-changing thing, but if you start now, you'll have a keyboard set up specific to you, and that's what's gonna make your workflow so much faster in the long run, especially if you wanna switch over to new software. Like, it can be so overwhelming trying to like get used to all the new keys, but if you know what you want out of your software, you'll go into the keybinds and make them specific to you. It makes the transition so much more seamless. Like, I switched over from Premiere Pro, and I believe the reason I learned DaVinci so quick is because I've had that custom keyboard set up for the last few years. Before I started anything with DaVinci, I went straight to the keybinds, and I changed everything to the way I wanted it. I was able to explore the software in other ways and I wasn't like getting like caught up learning keys and like thinking, oh, what's what and what's here. And like, if you ever want to change software down the line, you can literally just apply this method and you're literally laughing. You're ahead of the game and you're so much better off. I think a lot of times people are scared to change the default keyboard keys in case it hinders their projects or throws them off in some way. But I really think you should be investing the time into getting the keyboard shortcuts exactly as you want them. Anytime I ever make any changes to my keyboard shortcuts, I always I save the file, then I rename it to the date I'm in. Then I'll upload it to my Google Drive for quick access. This way I'm ensured I always have a version of the up-to-date keyboard shortcuts that I need. And then if I ever needed to do a computer switch for any reason, I know I have a copy on the cloud waiting for me. So if you'd like me to release my keyboard shortcuts, let me know down below in the comments. Now I do recommend selecting your own, but it is always nice to have a starting point. I've also linked this mouse down below in the description. It's a Logitech G305. Now any mouse with side buttons will work once you figure out how to remap them in the software. But I do recommend this because the software does make it quite easy and it's a relatively cheap mouse at 44 euro so if you made it this far in the video thanks so much for watching i do appreciate it subscribe if this kind of content interests you i hope to make a lot more of it and we'll see you in the next one good luck lads